I remember the first time that I made final stage. I was excited as Johnny Depp when he won his trial against Amber Heard, I prepared thoroughly. In the words of my deceased grandmother, those who clean on the daily don't have to rise up on a Saturday morning, meaning if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. My competitor, whew, excuse me. My competitor was spitting like I never heard a poet spit before. His low was a 9.4, and then a 9.7, and then the 10, and then the 10, and then another 10. This shit was literally killing me. He was hitting bar after bar with no drinks purchased. And for the first time in my life, I thought I had no chance of winning. Then the lights hit me, and I saw that I was in the biggest battle I will ever be in in my life. Do you know what it's like when your heart pumps out the metaphors through the oxygen tube that is going down your throat? Have your pectoral muscle stage presence all of a sudden become uptight? Do you know what it's like when they put a metal microphone stand implanted into your chest, making you the new black Tony Stark? And while you think in your eyes, man, you know that Thanos is one snap away from cutting your arc reactor off. Have you ever had a surgeon use a microphone as his weapon and you just hope that during your performance that the sound check from the engineer isn't faulty because on this stage here, a dead mic means a dead poet. November 4th, 2010, I made final stage with five random judges who thought I was just a poet with a lucky streak until I hit a 10, 10, 10, 10, and a 9.5, thus negating the perfect performance. And I was pissed until I realized I flinched when the catheter was pulled out my dick and I was named the runner-up of the cardiac slam. Damn, I did all this work for second place and I was mad until I realized that grand prize was a date with Jesus, Jesus. This became the hardest piece that I never wrote. More so, it became the only time I ever trusted another man's pen to write for me. But I was cool with having ghost writers when you consider many in my position became spirits, even though me and the dead have had a long-standing relationship. See, true story, I'm the son of a mortician. I grew up seeing the coffin as the most comfortable bed, and graveyards to me was the most best place on fucking earth. You see, I was always meeting different people. The grass was always green, and hide and seek was lit as fuck. Usually I would play with these large groups that come dressed in all black, and I hide behind these big ass stones, and even on my 10 count, they still couldn't find me. But I grew up to realize that cemeteries are the biggest gardens on earth with the most seeds that never got the chance to sprout. So I promise you Slam has one thing. I will write, I will memorize, I will literally put my heart into this, because I remember a time when my heart could give nothing. And if you see me pull out my phone, just know it's not because my words aren't dialed in, I may be calling 911 because on this stage here, if my heart forgets his next line, it's a low score and a flat line. November 4th, 2010, I made final stage, and it's the only time I've ever been happy with receiving second place. <laughs>